Doug and PA back with another video. So guys, I did a video on my channel last year about how 122,000 more single women own homes than single men. In my opinion, this is reality because men buy a house to put a wife and children in. Women buy a house as a, a status symbol and a reason to disqualify potential suitors. And it's crazy because women make less money. They have degrees in fields that aren't marketable, and a lot of women's jobs are, are volatile to the job market. So a lot of female jobs nowadays, HR, marketing, advertising, um, anything outside of teaching and nursing pretty much, they're the first ones out the door. But women are buying these homes and locking themselves into 30-year commitments when they know the – by themselves – when they know they're going to make less money and there's a good chance of them losing their jobs in an economic downturn. Well, I found this article. It says, women home buyers challenging the, the home ownership gender gap. Now, guys, remember on my channel, I say, be careful when they, they talk about a gap. The pay gap, you know, the, the wage gap, the, you know, the freaking achievement gap. The emotional intelligence gap. You already know what that means, guys. It's usually something that that women, that men have an advantage in, and they want to paint it as a bad thing by by appealing to your emotions. And a lot of times, these gaps, if you look into the science, it's not really a gap, or or you can logically explain why. So we're going to get into this article. It's called Women Home Buyers Challenging the Home Ownership Gender Gap. Before we do that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. It shows you support me and what I'm doing over here. And let's get into this. It says, gone are the days of almost always needing a partner to buy a home. Single women now increasingly have the ability and the desire to buy homes on their own. These changes have largely been driven by the increase of women in the workforce, along with new career opportunities and financial independence for women. Single women are buying up more property than single men, but tend to get the shorter end of the stick with the return on their investment. So what gives? Let's explore the various facets of the home ownership gender gap, why it may be occurring, and the steps we can take to, to close it. Okay, more single women own homes than single men, but there's still a home ownership gender gap. How does that work? The home ownership gender gap, the home ownership gender gap should be that Men don't have, have as many homes, and they should be working towards balancing that out. This article should be about pushing men, to, uh, single men, to buy homes. But we can't have that, can we, guys? Single women own more homes than single men, but get lower returns. D does that shock you guys? It doesn't shock me at all. Especially, in my opinion, if you bought a home in a primary market in the last three years, you're an idiot. The interest rates are too high, home, homes cost too much, and a lot of women bought in the last th three years, especially with the student loan pause. You know how many women I've met who don't know how they're, they're going to pay the, their student loans now when they, when they look at their bills, including their mortgage? Anyway, it says, uh, so for the National Association of Realtors, said that single women make up 17% of home buyers, with single men accounting for only 9%. However, a Yale study released in 2020 found that single women paid around 2% more for their homes and sold for 2% less. While 2% may not seem like that much, it's significant that when you consider the cost of a mortgage, single women were losing $1,600 per year on an average compared to a single man in a comparable house. The researchers noted that the gap size depended on how long they lived in the home, with the gap decreasing the longer they stayed. Caveat to the 2% trend was the discrepancy shrank when single women bought from and sold to other women. Once again, a lot of women, they get the feelings about a house and have to have it no matter what. I think that that's what this ha has to do with. And you got to risk walking away from a house. Us guys will be like, you know, I want this house, but if I can't get it for the price I want, I'm going to walk away. Women are like, I want this house. And I'm going to get it because it's the, the place that, that was meant for me and aren't willing to walk away. That's just my my opinion. 
the intersectionality of housing discrimination. You, you guys ready for this one? <laughs> Let's go. Although this article focuses primarily on women's experience and home ownership, it would be neglectful to ignore the intersectionality of housing discrimination throughout U.S. history. A variety of laws and practices have made it more difficult for, for people of color, color, people with disabilities, and the LGBTQ plus community to enter and profit from home ownership. The history is deep and complex and we'll just barely scratch the surface, but we encourage you to, to, to yeah, we're not going to do that. Okay, there has been housing discrimination uh, in the past, yes. But once again, I don't think that has anything to, to do with home ownership in the past 10 years, especially not since the, the cough cough. And, this, you, you know, the, one of the best things you could have done in the last three, three, four years is really think about whether you wanted to buy a home in this toxic environment. And guys, and guys we have the wealth of, of humans' knowledge at our fingertips now. You, you can literally Google, you know, should I buy a house in this current market? No matter what your race, color, creed, and sexual orientation is. Female home ownership trend throughout the, the history. Uh, let's take a closer look at how different factors... Oh, 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 okay. Show that single women have exceeded single men in home ownership since at least as far back as 1985. Guys, have you ever heard of this? Once again, the home ownership gap should be trying to get more single men to buy homes than single women. We'll, we'll, we're not going to talk about that. Single homeowners, single homeowners with no children. In the mid-1980s, about 42% of single men with no children were homeowners, compared to 53.6% of women with no children. In 2015, approximately 52.6% of single women with no children owned a home, compared to 46.2% of comparable men. When adding children to the mix, these numbers start to shift in favor of men. Homeowners with children. In 2015, data showed that married couples garner higher rates of home ownership. Gee, why is that? Because they have two incomes, with or without kids. Couples with kids came in at 70%, and those without children were at, at about 82.5%. For single men, we, oh wait, for single women with children, home ownership in 2015 hovered near 32.8% versus 45.6% among single men. Okay. These numbers may show that single parents need more support to achieve their financial goals. Yeah, because they have one income and children to to feed. Families and unmarried couples uh, know that 8% of home buyers in 2015 were unmarried couples compared to 10%. Okay, we can go past that. Why single female home, home buyers pay more and sell for less? Multiple reasons. Okay, gap negotiation. This study has shown that women are less likely to negotiate the price of a home sale. How's that men's fault? However, a more recent study examining salary negotiations found that women ask as often as their male counterparts, but don't receive at the same rate. It's because they're not willing to walk away. Like I said before, women will ask, won't get it, and then say yes anyway. Some social perceptions and biases against women may factor into bargaining situations. Women of color may play an even more significant role. Therefore, women may need to come equipped with additional information and negotiate better than men to achieve their desired outcome. While biases have cost many women extra dollars when buying a house, single female buyers can take steps to overcome this form of prejudice and bargaining outcomes. Market timing. Uh, single men time the housing market better than single women. There it is which played a larger role in return on investment. When looking at this factor, it's important to consider that in 2022, there were nearly 8 million single mother households compared to only 2.6 million single father households. When adding children to the market mix, buyers may not have the same flexibility and bargaining power to hold out for a better deal. See, men will walk away, guys. The best power you have, financial, social, is be able to walk away, guys. You see that that car that you want or that house you want, or even you get into a college you want, and it's too expensive, walk away, guys. Not seeing true value. The idea that women may be too particular about their potential home was mentioned in the study but not listed as a data back reason. The argument is that perhaps women are pickier about a property's feature or fall in love with the house that they see as the one. I said this before, guys. I said it. Women see their house this you know, this place centers my energy. I have to have this house. And they get screwed when they have to have it. And a good salesperson 
selling houses, cars, and that's what they play on, guys. The exact reason women's homes sell for, for less than men's is a bit unclear. Perhaps women need to push harder than men to get the same results or do more research to appear just as informed, but it's hard to say. Yeah. Of course, situations change on a, a case-by-case basis, but if you show up armed with knowledge and greater confidence, you'll likely see better results. That is 100% true. So we're going to go over 10 tips for single female first-time buyers. Know your rights. You know, I mean, we all know that. Improve you, your credit score. That is a big one, guys. Make sure you have a good credit score. Seek advice from for mortgage pros. Evaluate comparable sales and statistics and housing markets, guys. Look into special loan rates and low interest rates. Learn about the seller's motivation. Um, pay for a professional home inspection. This was a big one in the last two, three, four years, guys. But people were foregoing the, the inspection to buy a house. Why would you do that? Show you're a serious buyer, experiment with negotiation tactics, and be patient and know when to walk away. Like I said, guys, home prices are supposed to drop by 39% in secondary and tertiary markets this year, guys. So now might be the time to buy a house. Just be careful. I read an article where they said 70% of people that bought homes from 2020 to 2022 regret their purchase. And this is men and women. So, guys, stay vigilant. You know, make sure to get a, a good interest rate. And, you know, uh, don't just buy a house to, to buy it, guys. Make sure that you have a long-term plan. You know, if you want to get married and have kids, you know, but the days of just buying a house just to buy one, no, I don't know if we're ever going to see the, those days again. Anyway, tell me what you think about this in the comments. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you on the next one.